All right, today we're going to be uh, setting the timing uh, on this uh, Paramount M9 with the ROC, Paramount ROC motor. Uh, we're going to set the timing on it. Uh, some of the tools you'll need uh, to work to make it easier. The voltmeter with the It'd be nice to have the ability to to ring out or check for continuity. You can hear it buzzing whenever I touch the leaves together. Need a, a measuring tape or, or a strip of paper that's five, the, cut it five and a half inches long, mark it in the center. Um, a pen. Flathead screwdriver, a magic marker, black, any color will do. Um, seven eighths socket wrench to get your spark plug out. Flashlight and two jumpers with uh, alligator clips. Um, first thing we want to do is remove the um, spark plug. Well, actually, the first thing we'll do, we're going to make sure we set the brake on the motor car. And the brake set. I'm also going to check to be sure we have the battery disconnected, and it is in fact disconnected. Then we're going to come around and remove the spark plug. I've already loosened it, so I'm just going to pull it out, set it there. All right. Okay. Before we get started today, we're going to go over this. Uh, what we're going to be working with is this weather seal, Fairmont weather seal timer. Uh, I've got this one taken apart. Uh, this is the body of the timer here. Um, goes around the crankshaft on the motor, just outside, just inside the flywheel. There's a uh, wiper block on the crankshaft that spins around. This crankshaft spins makes contact with these wiper blades on the timer here. There's a little spring that pushes it back. Every time that, that uh, wiper block comes around on that crankshaft, it closes these timer blades like that. And what that does is it uh, creates continuity for the ground back to the, uh, back to the coal. And that kind of lets the coal fire and uh, and uh, causes you know to get a spark to the spark plug. It's fairly simple. Like I said, every time the uh, wiper block comes around, it closes this contact. What we're trying to do is adjust the length of time that that contact stays closed in order to get our fire correct on our spark plug, you know, let our engine run efficiently and correctly. But uh, that's what we want is, is to, to adjust the time that that point stays closed right there. Now, this is the the wiper, this is the lid of the top, and this is a rubber gasket. Now that keeps the water out, but it also serves another purpose in that when we turn this thumb screw here, you know, it sets down inside, I'm gonna try to use it with one hand, but anyway, it sets down inside the, the body of like this, this thumb screw turns down and it goes down the hole right there. All right, now, as I turn this thumb screw, Later, it's going to press down on this rubber gasket, and it'll reduce the time. It'll, it'll increase the time that this blade will stay closed because it's going to decrease the distance between that wiper block and the bottom of this wiper blade here. So as that crankshaft turns, it'll stay closed longer. The tighter I turn this screw down, and it presses down on this rubber uh, timer washer here. Uh, of course, there's your condenser. That's the condenser. When you hook this up, of course you're the, the, the tab at the top here is the one that uh, goes to the engine ground. There's where you, the, the lead that comes off of that will go to your engine, to the ground at the engine. And then the one on the bottom here, it, that's the one that goes back to the timer. And you're going to send that, 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 uh, that wire to go back to the timer. It's fairly simple, uh, fairly simple um, timer. This is in a, that gives you a general idea. That'd be your thumb screw. These are your 
tabs to make up your connections. Of course, there's your condenser again. This is your rubber gasket, and it needs to be in good shape. That rubber gasket, by the time they'll get deformed, uh, wore out. If you, if you do wear it out, you need to get you, if you do have yours that's wore out, you need to might get another one because it needs to be in fairly good shape. These blades need to be clean. This, these are a little rusty. So you, uh, if you can't get them cleaned up, then uh, you can just get some new ones. You need to check the points on it right there to be sure that they're in good shape. Uh, later on, I'll go over in another video, I'll go over how to adjust the, the point area inside here, but, but that's for later. But anyway, that gives you a general idea about what we'll be working with on the timer. All right. Our next step is going to be we need to find top dead center on this motor. We need to put the piston at top dead center. So, in order, what that means is this piston is going to be as close as it gets to the head on its travel, and, uh, and that's where we need it to stop. So one way to do it is to take a pin. You need something long enough it won't fall into, into the bore of the, of the uh, motor and stick it in there and run the piston. As the piston goes out, the pin will you turn your flywheel, and then as the piston goes out, it'll push the pin out, and that gets it close. The way I like to do it is you take a flashlight and just shine up in the shine it up in the uh, through the spark plug hole, and you can see the piston in there, and just run it, turn the crank, uh, turn the uh, flywheel with your hand, and you can see the piston moving out towards the towards the uh, cylinder head. As it reaches the end of its stroke and stops before it goes the other way, that's where you want to stop, right there. That's top dead center, uh, and that's where you need to leave it. Okay. Next, we're going to mark our flywheel on top dead center. Now, you need to line it up with something on the car, a point on the car. And on this M9, there's a, um, a piece of wood across here, uh, across on the engine compartment. And that's what I'm going to use to line it up on. Now, I've already got this one marked, but I'm going to show you where it's at. It's right there. There's my mark. And if you look, it lines up on this, on this cross member on the engine compartment. Once you get that marked with a pen or a magic marker or whatever, and roll the motor, roll the flywheel back a little bit so where you can get to it a little easier. And this is where you want to take your tape measure or tape, or what I see is easiest is just take a piece of paper that's marked and set the center mark of that five and a half inch piece of paper on the flywheel and then mark it on both sides. On both sides. It should be about two and three quarters inches either side of your center mark. And that's going to give you a good reference point for your dwell time on your uh, on your timing. And the dwell is, of course, the time that the, uh, that the spark plug fires and the, uh, and the uh, stroke of the piston. When the piston comes up, it, it lets it know when to fire. Your dwell time is the amount of time that the uh, spark fires, your coal fires your spark plug. So, but on the, the Fairmont, uh, a good recommendation is on these ROCs is about five and a half inches. Now that's a good start point. Some of them a little bit less. Most are not more, but some of them have a little less dwell time. So anyway, that's your next move is to mark that on the flywheel.